Hey, Lewis, it's uh, Big J from Hot 1019 in Billings. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> How are you doing? <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty good, man. How are you? I'm good. It's a, uh, sounds like I'm as just, good as you can be. I've just jarred you from sleep or something. No, absolutely not. I, I, I'm having 45 phone calls in a row today, and every time I'm told something, something else happens. Yeah, so, I know. I know. I can imagine how that goes. So I'm in a state of like, oh, okay, this will be. I thought you were going to call on a landline. So when this phone rang, I was like, what? Yeah, so, we were trying worry. to call your landline too, and it just kept ringing through. So I don't know if they gave us the wrong landline or what's going on. Okay, I'm going to kill somebody. Yeah, you, right. you should. I, you're probably expecting a call from like Tom Brokaw, and now you're disappointed. Like, oh, oh it's no, this guy no, 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 God, no. Please <laughs> get a grip. <laughs> So are you? Uh, you're on a big, huge tour right now, right? It, it, I've always been on a big, huge tour. <laughs> it, it never, never stops. Ends. It's just constant. Everybody, it, 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 the, the the material changes, but the tour is never ending. And so uh, you've got, but you've got big stuff happening. You've got a uh, Stark Raving Black that just came out last week. Yes, which is also totally a different concert than the one I'll be doing. So that's the one, and people can pick that up, though, in stores, and then also see you here in town doing In God We Rust. That's the new one? Yes. And it, that's the next, that's the next, <laughs> the next venture. Excellent. Because it, it, because it never ends. You can go through all the stuff, and then they've given you more stuff. Exactly. You don't, you're one of those guys, too, you don't do, like, a set, you know, you don't write the jokes right. You just kind of have stuff that you riff on, and then you just get pissed off and roll with it. I get, and then I take it and make it, and then I try to shape it into something. But about twenty uh, percent of the act is me just going off on whatever it is that's occurred that made me go off. Perfect. Is it? Has a doctor ever talked to you about that? Is that dangerous? Because you seem to get pretty, uh, pretty enthusiastic about some of these things. No, I have actually uh, t- perfect blood pressure. Wow. And everything else is probably rotting, but the <laughs> blood pressure. The blood pressure is spectacular. That's good. You seem to be very informed on all the political stuff here. And I know a lot of people that watch you probably agree with me and think, like, this guy knows a lot about politics, and he's right a lot of the time. Have you ever thought about getting into politics? No. I did for until I was 14 and realized, wow, that I would kill myself uh, early on if I had to deal with some of these people. Because they, they've got... I mean, it's just, there's no interest in really doing what it is you're supposed to do. There ought to be leadership camps established, and you send Republicans and Democrats, and the burgeoning Tea Party is there, where they learn how to talk to people in a simple fashion and make it uh, understandable. And then you tell them they're in a sandbox with other children who don't agree with them, and they have to figure out how to compromise, whether they like it or not. So shut up. On the topic of uh, all this local news here, Lewis, we actually had some big uh, news here in Billings that made the national headlines. We had a uh, tornado here. Do you have any... Is that uh, right? Well, you guys were hit? Yeah, we got uh, we got hit pretty bad. It took out our uh, Metra, which is our uh, performance venue, like a 10,000-seat arena. Luckily, it's not the one you're performing in, but our other big venue got completely taken out. Do you have any tornado jokes for us or anything? <laughs> oh, man. I, well, I don't know why they don't name them, either before or after. If you're going to name a hurricane, name a tornado. <laughs> you know? I mean, talk about something that's horrible. I mean, I just, I mean, that was the big fear. That I can't come there in the winter because I just, I don't have the clothing, and there's, I would have to wear a space suit. And so uh, I figured I'd come in the summer and there might be tornadoes, but I'm kind of shocked. I, I, when did this happen? It was uh, it was Sunday night, so just a few days ago. Oh, that, I can't believe it, because I, I woke up watching CNN, and there's been no there's no mention of it, those idiots. Yeah, God, they need to get on it more. But yeah, we uh, we usually don't have them. It's the first time one's touched down in our county, county since, like, 1958, so it's not common, Jeez. but they heard you were coming and sent one out. Wow. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. I'm, I'm really... Uh, that. That really sucks. Yeah, it, everybody's okay. It's just a material destruction, but yeah, it does suck. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Especially when it's like an entertainment venue and you guys are out there in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Where, where do we have people perform now? Yeah, really? Next time we want to bring sticks in for the fourth time this year, where are they going to perform? <laughs> it, that might have been, you might have set a world record laugh for something I said, and I appreciate that coming from you. That's my pleasure. That's fun.
funny. <laughs> what and is, I know sticks, which even makes it funny. Yeah, they're personal friends of yours. Um, <laughs> no, they're not. Yeah. Is, is it hard to tour all the time? Like you said, you're on a constant tour, pretty much. It's like I'm sure if you're not filming a TV show, you're on the road doing gigs somewhere. Does it? Is it hard to try to have like a, a what some would call a normal life, or do you kind of enjoy that life of constantly moving? You know, never really being home. It's not bad because we have a tour bus, so that helps a lot. And uh, and I'm not gone unless I choose to. Uh, like we're like I I got on the bus. We finished up in Atlantic City, and I. I've never been through that part of the country, so I wanted to travel through it rather than fly there. So in that way, it's great. You know, and it generally is good. I mean, I generally work four days a week and then go home three days. That's not and bad. when I'm on the bus, it's like being at home. Yeah, I can imagine. We're talking to comedian Louis Black right now. He's going to be in town at the Alberta Bear Theater tomorrow night. Your bus isn't like a normal bus. It's one of the really pimped out ones, isn't it? Yeah, it's a uh, seriously. It's uh, it's more pimped out than something should be pimped out. But others like Larry the Cable Guy are super pimped out. I'm just I have you know uh, you know Wi-Fi and TV. I mean, you've got everything there. Oh, we just talked to Al Roker earlier this week. He actually came through Montana on a bus, too, and donated like $1.2 million to a uh, organization that helps people with physical handicaps do outdoor activities. Maybe you could, like, stop your bus and donate to something while you're here. I certainly should. Like, I'm never going to. I just, I was just on with Al Roker. <laughs> I'm gonna, I could never follow a, in that kind of, uh, he, he's got some clout. And, and as a weatherman, I, and he, does, he didn't even study meteorology. He just he just likes weather. He likes rain, and it just worked out for him. I think he likes being on TV. Yeah, that could that could explain it as well. How did you get into this business? I mean, people know you now, but a lot of people I don't think know your backstory. I mean, it seems like you're almost like a an angry politician or something like that. But you're actually like a theater guy at heart, right? Yeah, I am a theater guy. It's like uh, two degrees from being gay. I'm uh, I'm not glee. But I did, I studied, uh, I wanted to be a playwright. I wanted to write plays. And then uh, I, I did that in undergrad, then I did it in graduate school, then I did it until I was about 40. And then I realized I was earning less than crack whores. <laughs> so you're, you're, you're now elevated to at least the crack whore level of earning. Yes, no, so it, 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 that was the, so I decided finally it was, uh, I'd, I'd kind of gotten, uh, people started to really like the stand-up, and uh, I was just doing it on the side for fun. Do you still... So what I was really trying to do, nobody was interested in. <laughs> so you went another direction, that's good. Yeah. There's a lot of people in a, in the celebrity world and the comedy world even that kind of make friends with other comedians or hate other comedians, and they kind of run with a certain crowd. What are you like in the, the comedy world? Are you kind of friends with everybody, or do you run with a certain crowd? Are there certain enemies you I'm, have? I'm, I'm, I have a, a number of uh, comics I know really well and that I really like, and then, but I'm generally anybody who's doing this, I'm supportive of, you know, even if I'm, even if they don't make me laugh. If you're doing the work, um, then that's all I care about, you know. But mainly, uh, I mean, I I like, and and comics make me laugh. I mean, I've got to say it. I like Kathleen Madigan and. Uh, my opening act will be out there who's great is John Bowman, who people don't even know him, and he's a, really a headliner in his own right. And, uh, and uh, there's a tall front of him. So you, but you pretty much just mainly roll with the blue collar comedy guys? Well, no, a bit <laughs> of them. <laughs> yeah, I actually am I'm, uh, good friends with Ron, and I, uh, I was working with Larry, uh, the cable guy, when he was Dan Whitney, for God's sake. Oh, before he uh, came up with the cable guy character? Yeah, I wrote the intro to his book. So you got, that's kind of cool. Like some of the comedy guys, uh, you know, don't like the blue collar guys because you know they think it's low brow or something. But it's cool that you kind of say, "Hey, you know, they're they're doing their thing and it's working for them." So you got to respect that. Yeah, you, you have to. Or, you know, I mean, they're doing the they're doing the work and they're uh, and they're and you know, it's uh, you know, what are you going to do? They, you know, the, what they're je they're jealous. They made a lot of money. What are you going to do? I think what people should do is come out and see your show tomorrow night, 8 o'clock, at the Alberta Bear Theater downtown. Tickets are still available, and uh, people are people are in for a good show, right? What? Are people in for a good show tomorrow night at the Alberta Bear? They better be, or I'm screwed. <laughs> Excellent. Louis Black, hey, it's been great talking to you. Hey, thanks a lot. I'll see you soon. The Big J Show, weekday mornings from 6 till 10 on Billings' number one hit music station, Hot 101.9.